it's like, you know, if Tom Brady were to go out, um, you know, he would have gone out on top a couple of years ago. Instead, you know, his ego gets in the way and he and he doesn't go out on top. You know, he, he will always be considered the guy who lost the, you know, Super Bowl, uh, whatever it is, um, or didn't make it to the Super Bowl. I had a chance to listen to to uh, the Long Goodbye, uh, gosh, final Candlebox album, which is a super weird thing to say, like <laughs> ahead of. I mean, h- how bizarre has I don't know, maybe not bizarre is not the right word, but how has this experience been for you guys? Did you did you go into the process of writing a new record knowing it was going to be your last? We did, yeah. We okay. discussed this um, as a band. We we were out on tour <clears throat> last spring. And I said, um, I think I'm going to pack this up on the 30th anniversary. Um, and I want you guys to make the last record with me the way that we want to make it without um, any outside influence. It's just ours. Yeah. And they were all keen to do it. I mean, you know, it was, it, it certainly was not an easy process um, or, or easy thing to, um, to process that we were going to do that. Um but the the actual process of writing the songs in the studio was easier than I had ever imagined, um, and I think it was because everybody knew that we were making the last record, and yeah. so you know we weren't we weren't going to stop ourselves um, if it didn't have a single. You know, oh, there's mm-hmm. no single. It doesn't matter anymore, anyways, to me. You know, um, but um, you know, it's it's just. Um, it's one of those things when you when you know that you're doing something, the finality of it, um, you really put everything you can into it. And I, I hope that you hear that on the songs that you've listened to, that yeah. um, it's it's just it's a, a different direction for the band. It's obviously songs that we love, in, inspirations that we've had from other artists that we've turned into songs. And, and, um, and I think we've created something uh, pretty special with this record. I, listen, I completely agree. And, and you very much kind of answered one of my uh, one of the questions I had, which was sort of uh, how did going into the last album shape what would come out? Um, and I, it's so crazy because like the process that I went through listening to it the first time I, I listened to it a couple times through and I was like, golly, it's 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 crazy to me that this is like this album is so good and it's going to be the last one. But also I completely understand going out on such a high note. You know what I mean? Like like saying like this is the fireworks show this is the display like this is what we're going out on like but out, there was a little bit of part of me that was kind of like damn I, I really wish i could see <laughs> what more what more could come from this you know <laughs> yeah well I mean, that's an interesting thing because it's it, it, as an artist you know you your goal is to constantly make records that people um appreciate and and, and an allowance of yourself to move forward as a band and um and I think we've done that with every record we've made since uh, Into the Sun in 2008. The difference is, is there's a freedom in there's a freedom that you give yourself when you when you know that it's the final, um, when you know that it's the end. It's like, you know, if Tom Brady were to go out, um, you know, he would have gone out on top a couple of years ago. Instead, you know, his ego gets in the way and he and he doesn't go out on top. You know, he, he will always be considered the guy who lost the, you know. Super Bowl, uh, whatever it is, um, or didn't make it to the Super Bowl, um, and 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 now that's that's no skin off of Tom. It's just yeah. sometimes you just got to recognize where you're at and 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 let it be what it is. And with this record, when we got in the studio in Baltimore for the first writing session, um, I just was like, guys, do not hold back. This this is literally whatever you want to bring to the table, bring to the table, because I want a record that people remember us by. I don't want a record that people go, oh, it's just another Candlebox record. Mm-hmm. You know, this has got to be the one that people go, you know what, their last record is better than their first. I mean, and that's, you know, obviously just my opinion. Sure. But, um, you know, that's something that you hope happens. Yeah. Yeah. I think there's like a very... Uh, um, there's a small group of of artists who last for decades and continue to make very good, very um, progressive in a in a manner of like who they are as people albums and not just churning out the same things that everybody. You know what I mean? Like that's very rare. And and Long Goodbye is a an incredible example, in my opinion, of of elevating your sound and 
just doing what you want to do and who you are. I was very, very impressed with the album the first time I listened to it. Very. Thank you, man. Thank you very much. Thank you. Was there, was there ever a time in the studio you're sitting there, you're working on these songs and, and you've got all these ideas are flowing. Did you ever kind of think to yourself like, oh, maybe not maybe <laughs> maybe we don't go out here maybe we wait like did you ever have like a moment of hesitation no no none no none. no it was it was um it was always even in the studio when we were actually tracking with um don and, and the guys you know because we recorded the record live um here in nashville um i just kept saying this is your last performance with candlebox is that what you want on there you is if that's what you want then leave that if it's not let's keep going and get what you want out of it because i said when my when my vocals come when it's time for me to sing these songs i guarantee you that i'm going to be no holds barred so if you're if you're holding yourself from doing something don't and um and i think that that's kind of that gave the guys the freedom to be um as progressive as they are musically you know i mean there's some solos on this record that are so brilliant from from both island and brian there's some drum parts on this record that are just so ridiculously solid um, that I haven't, you know, I haven't had in a while. And then, you know, Adam's bass lines on songs like Cell Phone Jesus and and um, a song called Washed Up, which I don't know, you probably didn't get washed up because I think that's only on vinyl. But, um, you know, it's it, this was this was me pushing those guys, you know, as hard as I wanted to be pushed. And Don, our producer, Don Miggs, was the same way. He would turn around and say, is that your final decision? Because mm -hmm. this is your final, you know? And, and in that, I think what that does is that tells, that tells the band that we're behind you 100%. It's not just my band. This is yours. And if this is what you want to do, then you should do it as, 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 um, as proudly as you possibly can. Was, did, did that, what kind of impact did that have on your time in the studio? I mean, did, did you find that you've, you worked on this album a lot longer than you have other albums in the past or did that motivation make it go quicker? I, it's a bit of both. Um, I mean, we had one writing session for a week that was in Baltimore. We had a writing session for a week that was in LA. Uh, and then we spent, you know, but November, December, January, February, March working and honing those songs. We had five months to hone those songs. Okay. Um, which was everybody making notes, everybody being prepared because we weren't going to go in and do pre-production, which is what we used to do, go in the studio for free production for a week and then record the album. Um, we had to, we had to be responsible for our own pre-production because we're all over the place. We had two guys on the East coast, three guys on the West coast. Yeah. And um, it's not like we were we have a rehearsal studio because we don't. Um, so really it was, um, it was, we spent a little more time, I think, honing the record. But when it got time to recording the album, it was rather fast. I mean, I think the, the tracks were done in the first week and the vocals were done in like three days. Wow. So it's impressive. Pretty quick. Yeah. What has it been like playing these songs for audiences? I know that you guys have been touring with Three Doors Down um, and you've done lots of other shows. But I mean, Punks is is God, what a strong for a single too man but but that song that's the only single from the record so far if i'm not mistaken I, yeah the next one there's there there two more there are two more there's like three singles i'm so sorry i i had that no that's okay i think punk they're not yet. Yet, right yeah yeah what's it been like playing these songs for for audiences for your crowd <laughs> well i mean it's been interesting uh with punks, <laughs> we with punks, what we do is that opening guitar riff, which is done on an acoustic. We we buy a, a bunch of acoustics from Fender, and we and I start that song, and then I throw the guitar out to the audience. So we give away a guitar for punks every night. That's so um, cool. Yeah, which is pretty great. Um, but you know, I think what it is is it's really giving them an idea of what they have to expect. And we play like with Three Doors Down, we're playing everything off the debut album except Rain, and then we put punks in the middle. Right. So we give the, that audience a little bit something different from us. Um, but at our own shows, we put three three new songs in the set, and it's amazing. We're loving it. And the crowds, you know, I mean, they're there to see us anyway, so they kind of know what to expect. They know that we do that, and um, and I think they're waiting for it. That's awesome. And um, the the tour with Three Doors Down, that's ongoing through through the early fall. But is this going to be – this is or is not going to be the last time – fans will have a chance to see Candlebox. Will there be more tour dates in the future or? No, I mean, as far as I know, we, we, end um, we end everything in October, unless yeah. the long goodbye takes off and becomes a success. And then I'll okay. have to tour on it. Next year. But, um, you know, <laughs> sure. That's, 
lightning in a bottle is a very rare thing these days. So I, I, I think we've, we've, um, we've allowed ourselves to realize that this is probably the last time anybody will ever see Candlebox this year. Wow. That's man, that's intense. Um, but you know what? I, I think for me, for my money, it, the long road is an incredible album, Kevin. I, I love it. I'm, I've been telling people about it. And I, I have a friend who, who he's a big sort of like uh, uh 90s rock grunge fan, you know, he's huge, huge fan. And I'm like, dude, I cannot wait till you hear this album. You are going to flip. He's a, he's a huge fan of you guys. His name's Randy. He's great. He's a big fan. And I was like, dude, I can't wait till you hear this album. It's so good. It's so good. That's awesome. Thank you. Man. <laughs> Thank you, man. I really appreciate you taking time to chat today. Uh, uh, the album is out on August 25th. People will be able to pick it up. Uh, um, and, and tour dates, got to check, uh, uh, candle box on social media, website, all that good stuff. Find out where you guys are playing. Hey, thank you very much, Kevin. I really appreciate it. 